let's check this. <clears throat> a function f of x is defined as follows. It is equal to x square when x is greater than 0 or less than 1 and x when x is greater than or equal to 1, less than or equal to 1 and these various values. So you have to check whether f of x is continuous at, at x is equal to 1. So let's consider this limit of f of x as x to move towards 1 from the left hand side. So which function would we consider? We will consider this square that is 1 square which is 1 and limit of f of x as x approaches 1 from greater values of x. So we will consider this function x which is 1 which is 1. So you see left hand limit and right hand limits are equal is equal therefore x is equal to 1 is continuous. We can even check regarding x is 0. This we are not very sure about because it is told f of x is z x square. So we don't know for values less than 0 what will be the value of x. So we cannot say what about x is equal to 3 also cannot be told. So the function is definitely continuous at x is equal to 1. This will be the condition that has been mentioned over here. Hence, now one more very important at x is equal to 3 and x is equal to 3. one more very important thing is we also need to check for x is equal to 1. So f of 1 for f of 1 will we consider this? No because we are not going to consider f of x as x square because this is valid when x is less than 1. But when x is greater than or equal to 1 it is x. So f of 1 will also be 1 which is 1. So the left hand limit is equal to right hand limit and it is also equal to f of 1 and hence we say these three conditions have to be met. The left hand limit, right hand limit and f of 1 have to be equal then we say the function is continuous and hence the function is continuous at x is equal to 1. Now for x is equal to 3 and x is equal to 0 it is not possible to assess over here because we don't know the value of the function when it is less than 0 and hence we cannot uh, consider those cases. Uh, also, we cannot find uh, the value of f of x when x is equal to 3. Hence, we cannot assess this part of it. So, among these, x is equal to 1 is what can be clearly assessed. Hence, this is true. Okay. Furthermore, let's see. Let f of x be equal to x when x is greater than 0. 0 when x is 0 minus x when x is less than 0. So now f of x is continuous. So since we are only considering 0, let us consider limit of f of x as x approaches 0 from negative, that is left hand limit. Hence we will consider the function which tells what will be the value of x when it is less than 0. Hence this one will be considered here. So it is going to be minus 0 which is going to be 0 except. Then we will consider limit of f of x as x approaches 0 from a greater value. Right? Now in that case you are going to consider value the function which tells what the value of x will be when it is greater than 0 which is x itself which is 0. Then we will find out f of 0 that is the value of the function is 0 when x is 0 this is also 0. So left hand limit is equal to right hand limit and it is also equal to f of 0. It means the function is continuous at x is equal to 0. If it is continuous it cannot obviously discontinuous or undefined at x is equal to 0. So it is going to be continuous at x is equal to 0. So let's check our options. Yes, it's true. <clears throat> okay. Then, all right. Now here we have a function f of x is equal to 5 plus 3x for x greater than or equal to 0. And f of x is 5 minus 3x for x is less than 0. So let us consider limit of f of x as x approaches 0, we can even put from a negative sign, x approaches 0 means it is going to be 
we are going to consider from a negative value all values less than 0. So, we are going to consider this function. So, it is going to be 5 minus 3 into 0 which is 5 and limit of f of x this is the left hand limit as x approaches 0 that is the right hand limit from values greater than 0. So, in that case for all values greater than 0, x greater than 0, this is a function that has to be considered. So, it is going to be 5 plus 3 into 0 which is 5 and f of x is also the same function when x is equal to 0. So, f of 0 would also be 5 plus 3 into 0 which is 5. So, all these three left hand limit, right hand limit, all these three are equal. Therefore, the function is continuous at x is equal to 0. Discontinuous is not possible, discontinuous and undefined because the function is continuous and the function is defined too. And hence it is true. Now, <coughs> let us take this. You have f of x. f of x is x square minus 16 upon x minus 4 for all values for any value x is not equal to 4 and it is equal to 10 when x is equal to 4. So that means f of 4 is definitely equal to 10 this is we know. Now considering this this can be written as x square x square minus 4 square which is going to be written as x minus 4 into x plus 4 upon x minus 4 into x plus x minus sorry it is just x minus 4 sorry this gets cancelled so that means this becomes x plus 4 that means for any value both for limit as x approaches 4 whether it is plus or minus because it is stored for any value of x other than 4 it is going to be 4 plus 4 which is going to be 8. So which means that the limiting value of f of x for x is 4 is definite which is 8 is definitely not equal to the value of the function f of 4. So, these two are not equal which also means that there is a discontinuity in the function. So, it is going to be limiting value of f of x for x approaching 4 is not equal to its functional value of f of 4. Hence, they are not equal. So, this is our correct value or the correct option that we have here. Right, as we have it. So, these are a few examples which make you understand how to calculate the left hand limit, right hand limit, how to calculate the function 2. Okay, a function f of x is defined by f of, f of x is equal to x minus 2 plus x square over all real values. Now, this is a different from the other because it is just one defining function for all real values of x. Now, as usual, let us consider the left hand limit which is going to be f of limit of f of x as x approaches 2 from a small value that is 2 minus h and this h is as close to 2 as possible. So, in that case it is going to be 2 minus h minus 2 plus 2 minus h the whole square which will turn out to be minus h plus 4 minus um, 4 minus 4h four plus h square. So now, now h has to become as close as possible to 0. So the limiting value of this is going to be obtained by substituting h. That means h is some value 0 0.000001 or something which is hence the limit of this particular function is obtained when you substitute h as 0. So, you end up getting minus 0 plus 4 minus 4 into 0 plus h square which will turn out to be 4. Must the same way take limit of f of x 
as x approaches 2 from a greater value that is the right hand side limit which hence you substitute as 2 plus h x as 2 plus h and hence you will get it as 2 plus h minus 2 plus 2 plus h the whole square which will turn out to be h plus 4 plus 4 h plus h square. Even here you are going to substitute h as 0 because the value is h is as close to 0 as possible hence the limiting value will be obtained by substituting h as 0 which will be again 0 plus 4 plus 0 plus 0 which will turn out to be 4. So the left hand limit and right hand limit are equal. Now let's see what is f of 2 itself. f of 2 would be 0 minus 2 the whole square sorry 2 minus 2 the whole square plus 2 square which will turn out to be 0 square plus 4 square which is 4. So you see that the left hand limit right hand limit and f of 2 are equal which means that the function is continuous at x is equal to 2 and hence that would be our right option right. Further more similar cases okay this is easier we have a function f of x is defined as follows f of x is x plus 1 when x is less than or equal to 1 and it is equal to 3 minus px when x is greater than 1 the value of p for which f of x is continuous at x is equal to 1 is so and so so if it is continuous it means that <coughs> left hand limit is equal to right hand limit and which is equal to f of 1. Now f of 1 as well as left hand limit okay left hand limit and f of 1 both these are one and the same because the value is going to be 1 plus 1 and the right hand limit is obtained by considering this function because this will be the limit when x is greater than 1 so 3 minus p into 1. So that will give you 2 is equal to 3 minus p. So p will turn out to be 3 minus 2 which is 1. So the value of p is 1. Hence we get it as 1. Yes we do have it. Okay. Then we have a condition a function f of x is defined as follows. It is equal to x when x is less than 1. 1 plus x when x is greater than 1 and 3 by 2 when x is equal to 1. So since 1 is the process, let's see what these various values are whether it's continuous at x is equal to 1 or no. So, so left hand limit for x is equal to 1. So it's going to be 1 itself. So left hand limit for x is equal to 1 is going to be 1. Right hand limit is going to be we have to consider this function 1 plus 1 2 they are not equal so definitely it's not continuous at, because 2 itself are not equal so definitely not continuous. Will we say continuous at x is equal to half x is equal to half so if it is x is equal to half there is only one thing that can be assessed because we don't consider anything so even Continuous undefined at x is equal to half continuous at x is equal to half is also out of question because nothing is told as to what will be the values which is greater than half this the value as long is going to remain as x itself when continuous at x is equal to half so maybe we should, we should check this so f of x is going to be just one value that is x so in that case let's consider left hand limit left hand limit is going to be f of x as x approaches half from half minus h which will turn out to be instead of so you get half minus h itself to find this we put h as 0 so you get it as half and right hand limit would be obtained by considering f of x as x approaches half as half plus h which will turn out to be 
f of x is x itself, so it's going to be half plus h, which will be half. And f of half is also going to be half because the value of the function is half whenever x is less than 1. So, it is definitely not continuous. Undefined at x is equal to half is out of question. So, it is definitely continuous at x is equal to half. You remember how we can do it is taking the left hand limit by substituting half minus h wherever you have x. And once you get the simplified version of the function, you have to keep h, the limiting values obtained by substituting h as 0. And in both the cases, left hand limit and right hand limit turns out to be the same. And value of the function as defined is x itself whenever x is 1. So it is definitely continuous at x is equal to half as we got it. Okay. <clears throat> now we have f of x is equal to x upon absolute value of x. Now, f of x is continuous at 0, discontinuous at 0, define that x is equal to 0, none of these. It is, now we have a case, we have f of x is equal to x upon x bar. Now, what is f of 0, let us see, to discontinuous. So, it's going to be 0 upon 0 bar, which is definitely indeterminate so it is indeterminate and hence it is definitely if it is indeterminate means it is not defined at x is equal to 0 at all because 0 divided by 0 is not at all defined so it is going not going to be defined sorry this is not defined at x is equal to 0 so we have indeterminate which I told you if a particular function is indeterminate, which means that the limit does not exist at that particular value of x. If it doesn't exist, it means left hand limit and right hand limit both don't exist, which means it is discontinuous at x is equal to 0. In the exam, suppose you even get undefined at x is equal to 0, even that would be right. But among these, the best option is discontinuous at x is equal to 0. Okay, right, we got that.